In this video, we're going to take a look at how to distort selected objects. You can see I've got two objects here, two shield shapes, one slightly rotated and one straight. We're going to come over to our distort selected objects tool after selecting my rotated object. And you can see we've got a couple of different options. Now, first we have the ro user rotated bounds option. Now, what's happening here is that if I were to apply an envelope in which to distort this object, with this option checked, it would use the rotated bounds of this object. You can currently see the bounds here for the transform objects is around the object. But when I click apply, you'll notice it uses the rotated bounds. And I can use these nodes to now manipulate by left mouse clicking and dragging this shield shape. And you can see how powerful this tool actually is because you can see how by distorting it, you can give it a different look. So for example, if this was a shield, you can imagine someone holding it underneath and it looks like they're holding it up towards their top right. So you can see how distorting objects is actually quite powerful and can give your vectors or objects uh, a dramatically different look. You can also use the node edit tools here. So you can see I'm in node editing mode here. So if I right mouse click, I can turn these into beziers to arcs or I can even insert a point to manipulate this vector or object even further. So if I pop one in here as well, and I can also turn that to a smooth point, and then I can get the handles to manipulate that even further and make different shapes with it. On this side, I can delete that point if I don't need it anymore, and I can turn it to an arc if need be. You can see how that dramatically changes it. If I hit Control Z on the keyboard, I can also turn it to a Bezier curve, and I can use these handles to manipulate that shape. So you can right click here and exit node edit mode, or you can press N on the keyboard, or you can also press escape on the keyboard and you'll come out of node editing mode as well. So with that one done, let's have a look at the other example. So if we cl close out this form for the moment and we'll come over to the right hand side, open the form again, and this time we're not using the rotated bounds because this hasn't been rotated, the pivot point is still in the middle. And you'll see if I put a bounding box around this one, same again, I can simply distort the object as I need. Now, you'll notice here that we've got some edit envelopes. We've got transform object and we've got edit envelope. If I go to transform object, the standard transform tools are available so I can rotate the object. I can stretch it out and make it larger. And you can do that from each of the points in the corners, left and right and top and bottom of that object. For the edit envelope, this is where we're in node editing mode. And then we can edit our vectors or objects as we need them. And then finally, we have the bake distortion option. Clicking this button will permanently apply your current distortion. You will then be able to either distort the object again with the new settings or node edit the shape directly. But effectively, this will save your current manipulation or distortion of this shape. So if I click that, you can see how it saved that setting. Let's have a look at the examples for above a single curve and between two curves though. So let's close out the tool for one moment and we'll turn off this layer, make this layer active, and we've got our welcome sign here. So we can click our new object and we can come into the distort selected objects tool again. And if I hold shift on the keyboard and left mouse click this curve, if I choose the above single line option, hit apply, it'll put the object on that curve and I can distort it now in that new location. Similarly, if I just control Z that and choose our text, choose our two curves and I can do it between two curves. And now you'll notice that the text is actually upside down. And why is that? Well, it's actually because of the start point. So depending on where your start points are on your vectors actually has a big difference on where your object is aligned to. So if we have a look at this one, you can see the start points over this side. So if we right click, make start point, then we'll try again. And we can now get our text the right way around and we can distort it as we need it. Now, it's also important to keep in mind that you can also use this tool with 3D components in software such as Aspire. Uh, so if you have any uh, components that you bring in, such as clip art, or 3D models, you can also use this powerful tool to distort those objects. And that concludes our video on distort selected objects.